flash there on the left hand side. I don't have to explain the Union Jack on top, the Ophir Clear, and the honor the top uh, at the bottom, the uh, Oranje Freistad flag. My talk is on the Rustenburg and the two Anglo World Wars, 1880, 1881. There is the typical war of the first Boer War. Incidentally, this is Commandant Piet Hubert dressed in his fighting uniform. Look at this. I think he's carrying a, a, a Martini Henry with those heavy caliber bullets of his. Imagine one of those bullets hit you. I skit you and you my and my die. Typical soldiers of the First Anglo War. This photograph incidentally was taken outside Pretoria on the farm Elans Fontein. Uh, there was during the siege of Pretoria a battle at Elans Fontein, I think on the 6th of January 1881. So this is a typical British soldiers of the First Anglo Boer War. The typical Boer. Da sit hulle met hulle Mosers. Dit lyk vir my of allemaal Mosers het en bandoliere. The typical Boer of the Anglo Boer War. This photograph was taken in the field. Typical British. This photograph was taken down in the Cape. Da staan hulle, it look they stand there with a, with a gun, something. But this is, these photographs show you, was taken in the felt. It's a practical photographs, show you how they looked. And if I may, may go back to this one, I was very privileged to know my grandfather and mother from mother's side and father's side. I think the last one died after I was my strict start studying. So I grew up in the company of the old outstrader and I had the privilege to walk with the outstraders on the battlefields. And my opa had so a lake. Till his death, he had his head with, with his uh, big beard. And this is how he looked all the years till his end. So I had the privilege to grow up with the outstraders. Rastemuk during the First Anglo-Boer War, uh, usually uh, it's referred to as the siege of Rastemuk. It's actually not very correct. It was a siege of Rastemuk Fort. We all know about the annexation of Transvaal in 1877 by Theophilus Shepston. I can tell my opa let noem genoemd die Duilse Sleipsteen. That was, that was what they called him, the devil's slave then. He annexed the Transvaal without uh, firing a single shot. As a result of that, there were ma major garrisons in, uh, in the major towns. And when war broke out, the British laid siege to all these towns. Marabastad Fort, Rastenburg, Wackerstrom, Leidenburg, Potsdam, Pretoria, and Rastenburg Fort. This is the British force in the Rustenburg in uh, 1881. There were 60, 60, 67 men of the 2nd Battalion, 21st Royal Scots Fossil Fusiliers, some men of the Army Service Corps and Army Hospital Corps, Medical Officer Surgeon Ritchie, Army Medical Department, and six men of the Rustenburg Rifle Volunteers under Lieutenant Rice Daniel. This Mr. Rice Daniel was a land surveyor and he made a, an excellent map of the, of the fort, which I'm going to show you. And I remember in the 80s, 80s the late Lionel Wolfson when he wrote his book, The Seeds of Rustenburg, the story of the citizens of Rustenburg, we were looking for that fort. So, me and John Pennyfather, also being a surveyor, used Daniel's map to locate the fort because there's a scale on it with distances. And they were all under Captain Daniel Auchinleck, with under him a Lieutenant Despard. Uh, this Captain Auchinleck died 
I think in 1975 in Burma. In the Second World War, there was an orc and leg. He had the nickname the orc. The fort, the fort itself was an earthwork about 25 yards square, which is about 22.9 meters by 22.9 meters. Now, there's the sketch that I told you about. I put some numbers in and the arrows in, uh, uh, referring to some certain important points. Number one, the Dutch church. Number two was the Landeros office. I don't know if it is the present day Landeros office. There's still a Landeros contour in, in the main street near the old NG Kerk. I don't know if that Landeros off. But, and there was a Wagner store. Wagner was one of the men who supplied the, 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 the cockies maybe with supplies. And there, number four, is the fort. And uh, for you that know Rustenburg, this is where we located the fort to be, on the corner of Von Willig and Kerk Street. Now, at the bottom of your picture, there's a, 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 a triangle called church. That is Reverend Stephen's church. Is it correct, Stefan? Is it not your church? What other church is there? That's the NG Kerk. But it was on the, on the corner of Von Willig and Kerk Street. In the old days, there was a clear school called Sinspring Clear School. But Sinspring has disappeared in the meantime. Good. On the 20th of, 20th of December, about 200 Boers arrived at Rustenburg from Posivström. They were commanded by Commandant van der Wald and a field cornet, Rickert. You know, the Rickerts in hierdie world. Rickerts, that is allemaal altijd in die moeilijkheid. <laughs> With the Engels, the Rickerts, the Rickerts is famous for the fighting the British. Good, they, they arrived at the town, and on the 27th of December, 1880, the Boers entered Rustenburg. And uh, they, they took the Landeros contour, and the firing started. Now, from the 27th December, 1880, to the 30th March, 1881, there was a mutual exchange of fire. The British held on, and the Boers could not get them to surrender. This is a typical men, the, the siege mentality. The same happened at Maffa King, and the same happened at Kimberley, and, and Ladysmith, and Wackerstrom, and Leidenburg. The Boer, they, they throw a cordon around, and they skeet in it, and they shoot back. The same happened at Jelans River where the, they, the British were surrounded and they contented themselves being sit there and just shoot back. And the Buddha just shoot at them. So uh, that's the whole thing. So we shoot at each other. Till when? Till what? Till what happens? It, it, uh, it, it is sometimes a Mr. Micawber situation, wait for something to happen. But as I said, from the 27th December 1880 to the 30 March 1881, there was this mutual exchange of fire. And on the 30, 30th of March 1881, a Lieutenant Rider of the 3rd Battalion of the 60th Rifles arrived at Rustenburg with a copy of the Peace Treaty. And the siege was over. But I've got, two, I've got two more things. The Boers had two secret weapons, which they deployed against the British. I'm going to show you the two secret weapons now. The first weapon was a Grieke. But this is not to be confused with the Grieke of Blutervier. So they deployed a Grieke. And this is the results of Grieke. First position, 2,000 meters east of the fort, on the 8th of January, they opened fire 27 rounds. The British did not return fire. Second position, they brought it nearer. They fired 13 more rounds. Third position, 500 meters from the fort, they fired 15 rounds. And in that, 
in that uh, venture two burgers died, a Pretorius and a Baron de Lange, and a Wolmeras was wounded, and Grieke was sent back to, Wol to Potsjefstroom. General Pietubert was very proud, he sent him that gun, and uh, he was a bit of a gun. And I said, he was gone back. But then came the second one, the big one. All the boeren were from here. There's not a boer that doesn't know about this one. Martins Rasa Cannon. He built that cannon himself here at Pritz, at, at, at Ras von, Bokfontein. But now, it looks impressive, Martini looks impressive, but I'm going to show you the results. On the 3rd March 1881, six rounds all missed. On the 9th March, 30 rounds, 26 misses, four hits. On the 12th March 1881, 30 rounds, not much damage. <laughs> and Martini was sent back. This Martini's Ras, let me go back, a very sad story. He was killed at Caius Pit just after the Derde Poort battle during the Second Boer War. Uh, the Bacatlas attacked the convoy from Rustenburg to, to Derde Poort, and he was part of the convoy, and he was killed there. So he died during that attack. But these are us. I think there are two, or two of them left still, one at Klapperkop and one at somewhere in Pretoria, but there are some of these left, so. This is my personal summary of the first Boer War at Rustenburg. I said the Boers did not fare well at Rustenburg and displayed a lack of enterprise, I'm very honest. The occupants of the fort never really suffered hardship in the form of hunger, and they never really suffered. I have in my position all Auckland Lake's official reports and they never suffered any hardship. You can believe me. Rastamak and the Second Anglo War War. On the 14th of June 1900, Rastamak was occupied by, by these two men on the left, uh, uh, Robert Baden Powell and Brigadier General Herbert Plumer. I have a telegram that says, uh, I, have it, I should have brought it, where Robert says, Get Bloody Biden Powell out there, he wants another siege. Get him away from Rastenburg. <laughs> so, yeah, when the British entered the town, they used the old jail as the headquarters. On the left is a beautiful photo, uh, a, a sketch made by Ethne Wilson, the widow, uh, the wife of the late Lionel Wilson. I think Ethne also died now. Uh, and on the right is how it looks today. It is, a, it, is a, it is in a sad state. But that is the British headquarters. I will show you a sketch made by Baden Powell. He was also there and he used those as headquarters. The first major event that happened was on the 7th July 1900 was the Boer attack on Rustenburg. The town was held by Major, the honorary, Hanbury Tracy with 190 men. It was attacked by General Lemmer and Commandant Casper Duplessis with 155 men. Now before the attack, Robert sent Tracy a telegram and he, in which he says, he used the word, you know match for the Larray. You better get out. <laughs> he will deal with you, and he will deal with anyone else. But Tracy said, I'm holding this, Her uh, Majesty was still alive. I'm holding this town for Her Majesty. Good. A fight ensued, and, but the British were um, enforced. Uh, I'll show you a map now. Uh, with New South Wales citizen bushmen coming from uh, Swatterigan's side, and the Boers had to retreat. Losses for wounded. Caspar Duplessis fell into British hands. He was nursed in the old hospital, 
and I think he was sent away to St. Helena. On the British side, two killed and three wind wounded. Recently we found, Stefan, remember, we found two, the two graves of the 7th July uh, casualties in the, in the cemetery. They, they, they are our the, were attackers. They, on the left is Commandant Casper Duplessis. On the right is General Hermanus Richard Lemmer. And I couldn't resist the temptation to put in that headstone. I was involved, and Reverend Buta was involved, with erecting, after 120 years, a proper headstone on his grave on the farm Farkfontein outside Colini. And that is his gravestone. And this is the type of work that we do. This is, a, this is what you do. That stone for me is, this is how you do it. I, I dislike people who talk a lot. I like people who do things. And this is why we do things. I say, I do think you do it. This, uh, again, I say for you that now Rustenburg, there's the old jail fortified, uh, and a lemmer of attacking from the south, Duplessis attacking from the uh, uh, north, and you can see the reinforcement of the new s south world citizen Bushmen overwhelming them, and lemmer retreating to Olifant's neck, which he held for a certain period till late in July. This is a sketch made by Lord Baden-Powell, but everything is wrong. <laughs> yeah, everything is wrong. I had to turn this thing upside down. His north arrow is wrong. <laughs> His north arrow is pointing west. You know, this guy was an artist. You know that. He was, Baden Powell was an excellent artist. I've got books, his books at home. He was an, but he was not a cart, uh, a land meter. I was a surveyor all my life and I drew maps. So I had to turn his map around and I highlighted certain uh, points. There you can see the jail at the bottom. And a little bit north is the cemetery. Cemetery still today, that, 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 that is the old uh, military cemetery. And then there's the town. The town was not big at that stage. So uh, forgive his arrow and so on. But, and his lordship was not a good, he was not good with Carter. He was good at sieges, but not with Carter. On the 7th of August, Rastenberg was evacuated, according to the official history, after dismantling the defensive works at Rastenberg and destroying about 400,000 rounds of Boer ammunition, Biden Powell evacu evacu evacuated the town. In September 1900, Rastenberg was occupied by Brigadier General, General George Glencairn Cunningham, with 1,975 men. And people from this date on, till the end of the war, Rustenburg was a garrison. I have here uh, a, a, a table uh, with commanding officers with the period on the left, Cunningham, Cunningham left here on the 22nd of January. He moved through Willifon's neck and he fought at Middelfontein, the Battle of Middelfontein. And then uh, Lieutenant Colonel Doran took over from him, and then Lieutenant Colonel Harold Wiley, Borton, and Wiley up to the end of the war. So uh, the, the town was a garrison town. I have in my position all the Rustenburg staff diaries. During the anglo -Boer War, all columns and all garrisons were forced to keep diaries and then sent it at, end, at the end of the month to his lordship in Pretoria, be it Roberts or be it 
So I have all the staff diaries. It makes interesting reading. I can't go through it now. It's a big stack like that. There is a list of some Boer War actions around Rustenburg. I'll show you a map now. Olifant's Neck, Koster River, Jelands River, Magatus Neck, not far from here. Olifant's Neck, Quaggafontein near Derby, Buffelspoort. That's where a British convoy was attacked. And uh, we a big battle on the Magalisberg where uh, De La Rey attacked Clemens. Uh, the Battle of Seiferfontein, where De La Rey attacked the Imperial Light Horse. Middelfontein, the, the, the battle that uh, Cunningham fought. Vlakfontein, a very controversial battle uh, uh, involving uh, General Kemp and General Dixon. Uh, there were Feldfire stories there, and there were injuries to some of the dead, but uh, that's a subject for the other day. And then Moodville. Moodville also a very controversial battle. Uh, some of the wounded soldiers that was left behind at Moodville, when they were collected, they had bad, bad, bad wounds. And, and certain Dr. Rinnekampf had to make a post-mortem, and he found some bad injuries too. But they were left behind wounded, but when they arrived in the Boer camp, those soldiers had terrible wounds. This is a, a map showing uh, all um, the major, uh, not the major actions. I mean, how uh, there, there were so many skirmishes. I think the official history in, in volume four says, if you, if you want to describe all the, all the skirmishes and everything, it will take volumes and volumes and volumes of work. So there you see Rustenburg on the, on the very left, Nooitgedag, Buffelspoort, Olifantsnek, and then west of Rustenburg, Magatusnek, Moodville, Koster River, Elans River, and south, Kwagafontein, Vlakfontein, and then to the extreme south, Seiferfontein. I, I end my talk with uh, some illustrations. This is a um, contemporary drawing of the battle at Ilas Fontaine, uh, at Olifants Fontaine on the 21st of July, 1900. I used this many times. This was taken from, at Olifants Neck, there was staying a man called Mr. Pierre Tiff. I don't know who know Mr. Pierre Tiff, but this was taken on his property. So every time we go there, me and my uh, deceased colleagues, we use this sketch on a board and say, kijk, daar is die kop, and daar is die kop, and it makes much sense if you use this in the field. This sketch was made by uh, uh, Lieutenant General Burgoyne of the 2nd Brigade Royal Field Force on the 7th October 1900. Lieutenant Burgoyne also made a sketch of Magatus Neck. This is Magatus Neck if you go towards uh, Zierest. The center, if you left, on the left is the copy where the F, FM touring is on. And on the middle is the copy, and on the right is a big round copy. I was a young man and I dug out one big box of ammunition, British ammunition there. And there's a, a photograph taken immediately before the war showing President Kruger speaking to the people. He had that pose. He had so praat. The old man had so praat. Uh, you know, he, he, he talked forceful. I marked him with a yellow arrow. That's, that's President Kruger speaking to the Rastenburg burgers. Uh, there is uh, a photograph of Rastenburg during the Boer War. The architecture, very plain, typical Boer. Boer is not much, it's more a typical Boer dorp here from the Westerhalsfall. This is a rare photograph that I came upon recently. It shows a group of soldiers on the south side of the Magalisberg, I think near Olifantsnek. On the back is the Magalisberg. I don't know to which re regiment they belong because the writing on the back was done in pencil and it's faded. I, I don't know. But, but those guys are, 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 are not fighting. 
And somebody asked me, where are their rifles? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. But uh, I, I know that they are making lacquer courses. Lacquer courses. And they, they, are, they, they are clad in uniform. There is an interesting photograph showing the Royal Horse Artillery entering Rustenburg. On the left-hand side is the Old Magistratskantoor. And about 39 plus 9, 47 years ago, me and my wife got married there. She died about nine years ago. But that building is still standing. I hope so. I think it was standing yesterday there. I think it's still standing. <laughs> and on the extreme, the, the church in the middle, I can't remember. Maybe some of the older guys. And on the very right, I've a gemerkt NG Kerk, the old NG Kerk. There is the tower of the old NG Kerk. This is a photograph of the Rustenburg Military History Cemetery immediately after the war. Uh, you can see still the wooden cross is still in good condition. And I want to tell you something about the cemeteries. And, and this, is, this is for the ladies. After the, and, uh, uh, and, and now listen carefully to me. After the war, the British left South Africa. And they left the soldiers. And you know who put those markers up? It's a group of ladies. They called them the Guild of Loyal Women. Yeah. And at Swartrigans, we had to take them out because they steal them and they, sell, they take them to cash for scrap. But the ladies looked after the graves. And they relocated some of these scattered graves. And they put up. And the other, there are some of these headstones that were put up by brother officers or father or mother. But the usual, the iron ones, the cast iron ones, was done by the ladies. And I always say that. And that they must, we must not forget it. The ladies did their part. This is the old NG Kerk. On the left is a photograph taken before the war. And on the right is a photograph as it is today. Uh, it was used by the British as a hospital. There's a photograph of the inside showing the beds, soldiers lying in the beds, the old uh, and the kerk. There's another one. That guy there doesn't look very sick to me, but in any case, he's like, <laughs> and that is still there. There's, there's one of my favorite photographs, and that's where I trespass on his ground. That's a Ulifant's neck during the war. And, and if you look on the left, right hand side copy, you can still see, see a fort. There was a fort sticking out like a pacey there. This is approaching from Joburg's side, Willy von Snack. And uh, this, there are two maps which was produced here by the survey section of the Royal Engineers. Very few people know that the, I was a surveyor my whole life. The surveyors were at work. And th these two maps were produced. On the, the blue one is, 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 is a prese presentation sheet. On, uh, and, the, and the right hand side one is what, what was called the field worksheet, where they made their symbols and stuff. One of uh, Cunningham's soldiers made a sketch of Rustenburg and the defenses. And it's a very small sketch, like a matchbox. And uh, I've, I've, I've worked with maps all my life, and I made a hand-drawn copy. It shows the, uh, the, the town, the cemetery, the prison. It shows Fort Canada. It shows the, the outpost line, and the German Padre's house, and the mill, and the location. So yeah, there it is. And I think that is my last one. And I think this one is for everybody.